Um, so for our public information hearing, you guys want, you know, you all know Jeff and Mark. Do you know, do you know all of us? Yeah, Jamie, Jamie and Jordan. Jordan. And, and Ann Tulin, our postmistress at East Montpelier. Kari Bradley, our new town administrator. Right. And Rose, Rose. Uh, Rose knows everybody. So I used to watch his kids in my daycare 35 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> just saying. Nice to see you, Jeff. Okay. Would you guys? You can, any way you want. You can sit there. You can come up. Whatever you like. I'm just going to hand this out. This, yeah. So we're opening great. the public hearing to review the Vermont Community Development Program, the grant that the town received on behalf of the East Callis Trust. This is a summary. Yeah, I have one for Donnie. Yep. Too. Of here. the sources and uses of the project. That's for Donnie. Just one if you have enough. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, Mark is going to start us off. So anyway, big, simply, big thank you. I mean, this project has a lot of mothers and fathers, 2.8, 2.7 million bucks, 21 funding sources. Mm -hmm. But first of all, the town, very, one of our very earliest grants came through the town, a small grant, but it was really important because it got us talent, and we really needed talent to raise the money, the fundraising talent. And then the, our, our, I think our largest, no, yeah, our largest single grant was the Vermont Community Development Program grant, and that came through you guys. And so, and we're done. I mean, it's complete, and uh, it was four hundred and thirty-eight thousand. Four hundred twenty-eight thousand. Four hundred twenty-eight thousand. Of which, of which, four hundred twenty-five thousand was a subgrant to the East Coast Community Trust, and three thousand was for the town's uh, administrative costs. So anyway, <clears throat> this is a formal hearing just because it's required by federal law that we report to the town as a subgrantee, and we are. So thank you, and now I'll turn it over to him. <laughs> and to get input from the public as well. <laughs> so of the 3,000 that was uh, earmarked for the town's administrative costs, we spent uh, 1,980 on the town's attorney to review all the VCBB documents. And there's $1,020 left, which can be held back and used towards the single audit that you'll probably end up doing mm -hmm. for the next fiscal year. This fiscal year or next? This one. Um, you know, Mark already said it had 21 sources of funds, 2.7 million. It was a complete gut rehab of the building. We re revitalized three apartments and reopened the general store brought the whole building up to code and uh, energy efficiency standards with air source heat pumps, heat recovery, ventilation, uh, all new insulation in the building. Uh, we made the building ADA accessible for the store as well as one apartment is fully accessible. We uh, abated asbestos and lead in the building like paint as well and pulled the underground tank out. Uh, what else? Oh, and it was a historic building, and we utilized historic tax credits and met all the requirements of the National Park Service, which was not an easy task. It's um, just imagine a building built in 1850, and that every single modern convenience you can think of was done on the cheap, and that's what that building was. And so the, the EF wall had to. I mean, it was amazing to watch someone tear apart an entire building while holding it up. And that's what they did, and they really did a good job. Uh, and as he said, it's the only, I think it's the only general store in Vermont that's 100% fossil fuel free. Uh, and so, and as you saw, like many of you have seen it, came out well, so. Um, oh, and the historic preservation money comes through, it, it, it comes with the regulatory involvement of the National Park Service, and the National Park Service historic preservation people are as rigid as they come, 
And we just received our final, final sign-off. I mean, we're done with that. So, at any rate, thank you to the town, really. It's really... Well, congratulations. Yeah. I mean, it's been how many years? About four work, I guess. It's amazing you were, it, that's all it took. Well, it's like kids. Had we known, we might not have done it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was an amazing process. So, thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Anybody have any questions? I was just, with the, did the apartments get some sort of backup something for our ongoing power outages? You know, Heat and or <clears throat> the short answer is no. Um, we've looked at backup and we have bids that are just like 40,000 bucks. Is that the store only? That's a store in the common area. Yeah. Which, um, but, and that's probably will go down when we know more about how much they really use, then we can get a better bid, but it's just a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Right now the store is just using, like your store, just a generator and plugs, you know, extension cords. It's obviously becoming more of a problem, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, so you do, have a, you, you do have a generator in the store then? Oh. No, they just, just a, bought a, a gasoline. Uh, she bought a gasoline portable. portable. Mm -hmm. Just like the so local corner have. store has a gasoline portable, mm -hmm. and they just run extension cords into the freezers and the coolers. That's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> just switching around. But you know, you have lots of practice now. Really good at it. <laughs> at least it's GMP and not wet. Huh? <laughs> at least it's GMP. And not quick. <clears throat> and GMP has plans to harden their lines by undergrounding them, and they are real plans. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the routine corridor, the Route 14 corridor, you know, in the next few years is an underground. Hmm. Well, that was easy for you. <laughs> There's just this little piece, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Anne. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions from the Public. Um, yeah. You can close the public hearing. Then. All right, and that's uh, that's done. Yeah. And, yeah. So, Mark, we've got a few minutes. Would you like to do a quick five-minute legislative update? Easy to do it in five minutes. <clears throat> First of all, I have to say I, I expected to be interested. I did not expect to have such a positive feeling at such a good time in the legislature as I did last session, <laughs> and it was it's frankly because. There's just a lot of well-meaning, intelligent, thoughtful, a lot of young people, a lot of people without crazy egos. It's great. It's a good place. For me, I, I feel it. At the end of the next session, will I feel the same way? Who knows? Last session was pretty amazing. We passed a really good child care bill that puts Vermont from nowhere into the forefront of child care, which is really important because we need young people to move here. I think there's a lot of pressure on young people from the fires in the west and the uh, heat in the south to move here. And yet, it's, if they can't find a place to live and they can't find child care, it's a problem. We did do a lot for housing. It's much harder. We did a lot for housing. We did a, one, a suicide prevention bill. We have one of the highest suicide rates in the United States. Some of it, a lot of it with young people because rural access to guns it's like, you know, we have, we're, we're the classic case. And it just, it involves, to, you can't just go out and buy a gun. You have to have a waiting period. Anyway, this session, I, it's hard to predict. I have three bills that I am going to introduce. But I will mention two of them. Only two minutes so far. I'll mention two of them. They're both about flooding. <coughs> I have a bill that transfers jurisdiction for regulation of the Marshfield Dam and 21 other power generating dams away from the PUC, which knows nothing about dam safety and a lot about power generation. And the bill will transfer the dam safety part over to DEC's division of dam safety because they're good and green is good. So that bill is complicated. Easy to write, complicated to negotiate, PUC, uh, DEC, and now the uh, GMP owns that, the Marshfield Dam. 
I'm concerned about the Marshfield Dam because if anything were to happen, God forbid, if we were to have another rain like we did, maybe even a little more, because it could be more, and they had to open the floodgates, what we know as Plainfield, what we know as Marshfield Village would be gone in two minutes. And what we know as Plainfield would be gone in an hour, and East Montpelier would be damaged. It would be just a, a horrible disaster. And <clears throat> so I want, I want a really good pair of eyes on that dam. The second is, what I've discovered is Right now, dam owners are responsible, as you know, for putting together an emergency response plan. Well, it's one thing when you're dealing with a dam like Curtis Pond, which, if God forbid, it, we, it would flood out eight or nine houses or ten. But if you're talking about Wrightsville, or you're talking about the dam, Marshfield Dam, they have to put together a plan, and they have. GMP has put together a plan, it's half inch thick, and it's not bad, but no one reads it. No one approves it. It just sits and gathers dust in some state offices, and a copy is given to each of the towns. What do they do with it? They, they don't have the resources. So consequently, very basic issues, I mean, it doesn't take rocket science to think about these issues, like how many people are we going to have to evacuate? Where are they? And how do we evac get to them to evacuate them? Do we need helicopters? Boats? Where do we take them? Where do we plan this given that our firehouses are underwater? We can't be in our firehouse. So where are we going to go to have the command center that has does the woman have telephones? I mean, questions like that are not being addressed by the Division of uh, Environment, what's it called? What's the safety? Yeah, safety. No, public, the, DP, the public safety or emergency, Vermont emergency response. Vermont emergency management. Management. They're not addressing it. They admit they're not. DEC isn't addressing it. So I put together a bill which says we're going to have a summer study committee with all those people, including the Regional Planning Commission, is on the study to figure out how can you do that kind of implementation planning? At what level? I think it's the RPCs. How much will it cost? Because I just, you know, this isn't sexy stuff. No one wants to think about it. But I'm thinking about it. That's it. Thank you. Anybody want to ask Mark a question? You said there are three things. That was two things. Uh, the third is I have, there's a problem we have, which isn't very widespread, but when it happens, it's pretty miserable, where people come onto land and steal timber. Mm. They steal, they log, they're rogue loggers. They, they, they log more than they say they will, and then they don't pay. And there are judgments against them and fines, and they just don't pay them. And I have a bill which is saying if you have fines that are unpaid, that you need to post a bond with the AG, and that if you Law without the bond is a crime. So that, that's uh, logging on, on private land? Private or, land, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a crime, and you, you can actually confiscate your stuff. The problem is, Frank, in other words, current law just, we don't enforce the law. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have, these guys get fines. In other states, they go to jail. Mm -hmm. Here, the state turns it over to a collection agency. The collection agency sends them nasty letters, and that's the end of it. They don't pay any attention. So I'm trying to ratchet up. The, I'm turning into a law and order person. <laughs> <laughs> An unaccustomed role. <laughs> Anybody else? Mark, the, the child care bill, is that why we have an increase in our payroll tax? I don't think it's effective yet. No, it's not effective, but we're... we're there will be, a, it's very, it should be a very small... Yeah, it's 0.44%, it's yeah. but that's how you're funding it, is that It's through right? payroll tax. And what will it be used for? It's, it, right now, you have total market failure. It, it costs too much, and the people who work there don't earn enough. So it will be used to increase the wages of the people who work there and increase 
the amount of money available so there'll be more of them. The opening more child care centers and making sure that the people have them as a living wage. And I actually work on the budget, I'm in the budget committee, and I work on getting more money to the state colleges to train child care workers. So there's actually a career path, and at the end of it is like you can earn enough to live. That's the idea. Thank you. OK. Terrific. OK. Thanks so much. Sure. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Both yeah. well, of you. Um, does anybody, uh, no, we've got a couple of things to do before public comment. Um, minutes, have you all had a chance to read the minutes? Anybody want to move the minutes? To move. Both? Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to accept uh, minutes from November 27th and December 4th. Okay. Second. Second. Discussion? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Uh, board orders. Has everybody had a chance to look? Oh, they're in your. Um, I'll look over the yes. I'm not used to the new system. Uh, okay, so you don't want to vote yet then? No, we can go ahead. I never have any. Okay. Oh, I trust they're fine. Yeah. We can vote on them. Order operations would be appropriate. We'll just say today and let her sign them and then otherwise we're approving something. That's fine. Remind me to do this at the end. I will. Okay. Um, uh, Barbara asked me to remind everybody, and she's right, that we have this Washington County budget planning meeting on December 15th. If any of you would like to go, it's at the Kellogg Hubbard Library at 10 in the morning. All right. Public comment. Nick, are you here to speak? Oh. Yeah. Go ahead, Barbara. Sure. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I'm not actually uh, also speaking on behalf of the emergency management team. He has something else for emergency management team. But this one is at the last emergency management meeting, Nick asked that we be sure that all town officials have a hard copy of the local emergency management plan for Calus for 2023. Yeah. Your power goes out, your email goes out, and so forth. It is the first five pages of this document are on the town website. It's a 12 page document. The first five pages are there, but not the last seven because they contain confidential contact information for a whole lot of people in town and we don't want that posted to the website so i have a hard copy for each of you here at the front table um, please keep it handy in case your power goes out or your internet goes out and you need to make reference to the local emergency management plan um, and please don't distribute it or share it with others because of the confidentiality of the contact information on the last seven pages so you gave Here, them. Go, go ahead and pass one down. There's one there for Kari, and we'll get one. That's for Donnie. It's okay. Is, is, is he going to be here? Yes, um, he's coming. I, he, okay. I think he may have just. He was on his way. He was having Okay, so here's, here's Kari's there. Here you go. You're welcome. All right. Okay, thank that, you, Barbara. That was it. Thank you. Thanks. So it's the whole thing, right? Um, will that tell us what to do if there's a flood also? Just a That's a different document. No, it's <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, I can answer that in very briefly that if there is a breach of the dam, there is a, a contact list who, who calls who, but the designated incident commander is the uh, is Albert, fire chief, mm. he's not clear, uh, so he'd be the very first person to contact. And uh, the rest um, is in place with a network of phone lines. So what would you like to speak about? A couple of uh, uh, brief items. One is I just want to report on the performance of the, the new generator out here during the 40-hour um, power outage. Uh -huh. uh, I checked the gauge um, as, it, as it happened just before that. It was at 53%. And after 40 hours of running during outage and keeping this building warm at um, low use usage, it was down to 48%. So, that gave us uh, a, an, an idea of what consumption we might be expecting in, in terms of capacity and how often to um, get the tank refilled. It worked perfectly. It switched itself on, it switched mm -hmm. itself off when the power came back on. So. 
So uh, that's three days it could run, you think, I, or four? I, I think it was 40 hours that it consumed that amount of, uh, from 53 to 48 uh, percent full, the tank oh, okay. had to gauge its fees. So it's more than that. It's yeah. a little more than that. Yeah. So less than I had expected, yeah. um, but gives us an idea of yeah. the future use. Okay. And I did call the uh, propane supplier and asked them to come sometime in the next few weeks to refill, even though it's almost at half. So, uh, the other thing is that uh, we got a call from the East Montpelier Emergency Management Committee, and they said, you've done a lot of great things getting your shelters set up. Uh, could we collaborate with you? Could we come if there was an incident and a lot of people were needing shelter, could we use your shelter and, and collaborate with you on managing it or we could supply uh, volunteers to help run it? And I said, sounds like a great idea. So I just wanted to, to mention to you that that conversation is going on. And at some point we would want to ask the town uh, select board. Uh, I don't know if there's any official action which we, we would need to consider on that if there are insurance uh, issues. But that's just, a, that's just a preview of maybe a future conversation. Mm -hmm. And the last thing, oh yes, uh, maybe that's further along the agenda, it's about um, the ARPA funds that we think were previously allocated for a couple of emergency management projects, um, which come to something under $2,000, but uh, if you like, I can wait until that, you get to that part of the agenda. No, why don't you go ahead. Okay. Um, and so I had sent uh, Anne Winchester and Sandra an email a week or so ago saying, am I remembering this right? But the two items um, that we were hoping or thinking that ARPA would cover are, um, one is in August, I'm going to read this, the town purchased radio communication equipment through the EMPG grant, and that's how we got the generators and the, uh, the defibrillator and a few other things. Uh, but one subset of those purchases was identified as ineligible under the terms of the grant. And those things were three radio antennas uh, that we wanted to put in, one at the town garage, one at the, um, at the school, the elementary school, and the other at the um, What's the third, where's the third one going? Is it here? Community center? No, the corners? At the, yes, at the community center. Thank you, Tom. Uh, we already have the one that we did install, an 18 foot antenna here inside the bell tower is installed. Uh, but for reasons I won't go into, uh, we, the others slipped out of the grant. So the cost of those three antennas, which the town has already purchased, is $1,454. So uh, we are uh, hoping that that is still the case, that ARPA can cover that expense for the town. Um, I can go into more detail if you would like, but. Um, Which one do you want again? 1000 $1,000. $1,454? $1,454.89. Okay. Thank you which the town has already expended. So this may be just a bookkeeping maneuver um, to get it allocated to the right uh, expense. Um, but but I, I thought you also said you thought you had 4,000 left. That's what someone, that's what either you or Sandra had said to me. Uh, and did Sandra during, respond to that? She said she's um, going, taking a deep dive into all of that. Okay, so and, we still don't know. And so we still don't know, but she okay. said there's some um, untangling to do with uh, previous promises or allocations around ARPA, and she's working on it. Okay. Yeah. All right. The, so other, um, the other thing that is, came up that's new is that we discovered that we're going to need an electrician to help us run cable from the antenna. Uh, down here, uh, we, we uh, Rick Keen and Jake Aho and I were here. Said, you know, we are a little nervous about. Uh, we don't have a long enough. What do you call it? The, going to, to move the cable through the walls, and we're not exactly going running blind. Not exactly sure what we're going to be drilling into, and we need, we need to have a professional do this. So we're estimating as much as five hundred dollars to have uh, an electrician. 
do it the right way. This is running the, the, um, the cables from the antenna down into this room for both the cell signal booster and for the radio transmitter. Does Sandra know about that also? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So let's hope she finds 4,000 and we, we're all set. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, I don't know that there's much else we can do until we know yeah. what the situation is. Yes. That's uh, it. Thank you. Sure. Uh, any other questions for Nick? Thanks for coming on yeah. this yeah. slippery night. <laughs> uh, Steve Gray is up next. Steve wants to run his run the snowmobiles on the town roads. <laughs> Annual request. <laughs> yeah. Um, each year, um, snowmobile clubs throughout the state are required to uh, at least we do it in Dallas annually. There may be other towns that do it and perpetuate it, but we bring a list, which I think you all have, of the road openings that uh, we would like to use as snowmobile trails. In Dallas, we're fortunate there's only a couple of actual uh, main trails that will be on plowed roads. The rest are for access only, so very minimum amount of traffic. And I'd like to just point out in the agenda item, uh, if you use that as a motion, um, it does state in there that uh, must receive annual permission to cross certain plowed town roads. State statute allows snowmobiles to cross any plowed highway at a right angle or as near as possible to right angle. That does not require slipboard uh, approval. What we're asking for is to actually use a portion of the plowed road by following it along. So I would simply change that word, cr word cross to use. And or use a portion of. Yeah. Use a portion of. And then there the uh, road are described in the um, letter that was sent to the for you folks. So basically, that's why I'm here and answer any questions you have. Now, we've had one other one come up. I think Jamie would like to speak to that. Um, we've been, in the last couple of years, talking about the possibility of opening a short section of Kent Hill Road so that snowmobiles can get from the main trail that crosses the road just uh, easterly of Dimmy Wheelock and, and Sherry Fitch's driveways up the road to get to the store. Uh, for a number of reasons, uh, conveniences and that kind of stuff. Um, we haven't resolved that, but Jamie got a hold of me today and wanted to, and we don't have a problem with it. I think there's some things we need to think about and keep our eye on if we're going to do that. Um, it won't be a main trail, it won't be a quarter trail, I don't know that it will even show up on the vast map, but it will be legally open and it can be signed, uh, whatever, for a sign for the Maple Corner store and um, appropriate signing would have to be done. Um, our concerns from Snowmobile standpoint is we got an intersection to get through. So once you come up Kent Hill Road, you're gonna to have to cross basically the county road in a diagonal, which is permitted, but it could potentially be dangerous there. The traffic is not super heavy, but seeing up the hill and so on for snowmobiles to get across, parking in the driveway, without uh, obstructing other vehicles could become a problem. And we also get concerned when we have <clears throat> encouraged snowmobiles to ride after dark in places like that as well. So that's just concerns. I just think they ought to be mentioned. And um, if you don't have a problem, we don't have a problem with it. It's just, it needs to be thought about. We're not um, you know, trying to promote those kind of things, but we're more than happy to work with Jamie on that. We may be able to shorten that a little bit. I'll see what I can do. We may not have to all the way to the road crossing, but I would, I would suggest that if you choose to do it, that you open uh, Kent Hill Road, which is part of State 8 Highway 1, I believe, and from the current trail crossing, which is quarter Route 12, westerly for a distance of approximately, I guess it'd be two tenths of a mile, one tenth of a mile, to the Maple Corner store. That should cover it if, if it's questioned by any law enforcement. To, to the Maple Corner store, and it's about, what did you say, one tenth I would, of a mile? I would, it's between one and two tenths of a mile. I, it's gonna be at least a tenth of a mile, I would think, but maybe closer to two, but, and it, it, that's not imperative, but it would be helpful. 
um, for people in the future who it's only a short section. And would you be the one to sign it? I can work that out with Jamie. Uh, we at one time had a access trail uh, on down on Route 14 that went up through the fields, cross Route 14, but it went up to the East Cows store. Um, and the store provided a, a sign, a larger sign that said what they had available at the trail where the intersection of the, the two would be. Uh, from that point up, we did sign it. We had a few arrows, we had some road crossing, we were going to stop ahead and stop sign on Route 14 and that kind of thing. That would be needed up here. There'd have to be a, uh, some uh, trail. We have to preempt any piece of trail that is being used, a road that is being used, with a uh, standard trail sign so that motorists approaching a piece of road that is open are warned by a trail sign so that they know they're on a snowmobile trail. Uh, are coming to a snowmobile trail. And then on the trail, we put, on the road, we put up exit left or exit right where the snowmobilers uh, can, are told to get off and try to mark it so that they can see that. So it would be a minimum amount of signing, but they would, you know, the standard stop sign is up there would be utilized by everybody and so on. So uh, we, can, we can work those details out. Do you want to say anything, Jim? I, I would just say that this idea came up in part because the snow machine trail used to cross um, through some backyards and dead end in what was then my front yard across from the store. Um, and it was regular, you know, snowmobilers coming for lunch and visiting. And so this idea has been bouncing around with the, at the store for a little while now about how it would be great for a snow machine Riders, as well as for the store for increased winter, you know, weekend lunch business and whatnot. Um, and the store would be, you know, happy to work with you and I figure out the sign details. And, right, yeah. Off and, you copy it um, right and I've had conversations with the store board about this, who's in favor and thinks it, I think it would be mutually beneficial for riders and. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I don't I don't doubt the benefit to the route riders and the, and the store in general. I'm, I'm in favor of that kind of thing, I'd be concerned about politics with local property, private property owners and um, and just being kind of mindful of worst case scenario of you know increased snow machine traffic in there and just making sure that we have like a plan for it, you know, I think part, making sure that there's anything we can do for like designated parking to kind of keep conflict, you know, conflict down. Not the store yeah. would have to take care of yeah, the parking. Sure. Yeah, for sure. We, I, I'll just say we don't encourage the use of plowed highways for so many traffic <laughs> right. but we have to do it yeah. on occasion. Yeah. And um, most snowmobiles don't care to ride on a plowed right. road. They, they get away from it as much as they can. Because sooner or later they turn to gravel, and uh, long before the trails uh, are done. For sure. But under the right conditions, it shouldn't be too much of a problem to go up there. But uh, again, the ones are signing and people calling. Yeah. Um, so, would somebody? How how do we do this? Do we have to? To incorporate this letter into the motion, I guess. I, 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 mean, right. I understand yeah. the motion is what you're, you've got written in your agenda. Yeah, and then we right. would add to it a number eight. Yeah. Um, part of Kent Hill Road from the current trail westerly to the Maple Corner store, a distance of about 0.2 miles. And, and if you would please add to that for access only. For access to for the access Maple Corner. Only. If you know a number of those that we have on the list, the first two, one and two, are, those are main part of the trails. They're, they're mapped and they're out of the, of the state system. And they're on down, the last the five of them, I guess, are, are strictly for access only, but for people to get to the house or something like that. They just can't get from their dwelling to a trail without traveling on a piece of plow highway. And, and, we don't advertise those, but they have to be legally addressed. Okay. So, 
Um, is everybody okay with adding a number eight? Let's start with that. I don't think Ken help you. Yeah. I mean, do you think Ken help people are going to feel ruffled? Is it? I don't really know, honestly. I've had casual conversations with lots of uh, Maple Corner folks who have all been in favor of it, um, but I have not had specific conversations. I've had conversations with Sherry, mm -hmm. who's the closest property owner there, um, but I have not had conversations with the other folks who live along that stretch. No, we is there any is there any way to get closer to the store without using the road with the cooperation of any of the property owners that are there? With the, the cooperation of the property owners, you yeah. can drive right to the store. Yeah. <laughs> but we have not pursued that. Yeah. We haven't had the not, we have a hard enough time keeping the other forty five miles open. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. I had a brief conversation a year or two ago with the owner of the house directly across from the store who was very supportive of the idea but didn't want it in his physical front yard with kids but was supportive of the idea of it being on the road circumventing his property right hmm. Is this something we could try, and then if there's an issue, we could... I, I was just going to say, just bear in mind, you can cancel it, you know, anytime you choose to. Um, yeah. We, we, yeah. I've got a clause at the bottom of that that says if, you, if the second board chooses to, mm -hmm. or consider, so just please let us know. But in this case, it wouldn't be detrimental to us, so it be more detrimental to the school. Mm -hmm. But we would, again, be willing to help. And, and we obviously want to be a, you know, partner and good neighbor to our neighbors. So if we received negative feedback from it, we, the, you know, the store and myself would be in favor of rescinding it. Yeah. But, but I think it would be net benefit more than challenge. I think the biggest concern, though there is a little bit for safety of crossing the county road at the bottom of that hill, someone who didn't have any idea where they were might not be paying attention. But it would be the storage problem of uh, conflict in the parking lot. Right. Because if you get six or eight sleds that ride in there, they're on their way from who knows where, Barry or Hardwick or whatever, decide to stop there and they all pull in the yard, they're going to take up some space. Okay. And that may uh, irritate some of the regular customers. As long as they spend a lot of money, it's just fine. <laughs> they're a lot of money, now they go back and go for it. Yeah. Okay. So, I was going to say, I think that having snowmobilers go to the store is a benefit for the store as well. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I think uh, anytime you can make a trail go towards a store is beneficial it for is everybody. It's service. Yeah. Works. And, and there's a lot of them around that the trails are maintained just for that, to, to get the services back. But you can have conflicts too. And, and again, we, we might be a little selfish about it, but we don't want our group to get a bad name either. Right. The, the, the snowmobiles are causing this problem, the snowmobiles are causing that problem. We work very hard at trying to avoid that. And, uh, but also, it's a community thing, so we're going to be proud of it. And as you yeah. say, we, if it, there's any problem, we just well, stop that's doing the it. Right. Shit, we're not yeah. sure yeah. it's like worth attention. Right. We may hear about it. We'll... So is everybody okay with adding a number eight there? Mm -hmm. Rose, do you understand what it would say? Yeah, I already had the motion, and then I just wrote as outlined in the listing and further add a portion of Kent Hill Road to access the Maple Corner store. Do I need to write westerly or what you said or easterly? Or? By, by Kent, way of Kent Hill Road. Kent Hill Road from the current snowmobile trail westerly to the Maple Corner store. You should put that much definition in because we don't want to open it any further right. towards Kent's Corner or anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Should I repeat that? So Kent Hill Road from the current trail crossing westerly to the Maple Corner store, 0 0.2 miles. And then per in for access only. 0 0.2 miles. Should it be for store access only, I guess? 
Well, since it says to the store. Okay. Huh. I, I, the access only that we use is to just define that it's not right. a main trail. Right. So when it goes to the store, it goes to a private house, or yep. goes wherever, it's, it's yeah. strictly for access. It's typically dead end. Right. So, Rose, you all said or do you want me to repeat it? Okay. Fine. So Who's would the motion? Somebody like to move that we ex um, author, uh, what are we doing? We're authorizing the use of uh, town yeah, roads. As stated in the letter dated December 4th from the Mountain Tamer Snowmobile Club to us. <laughs> but you want to change the word cross certain roads to use a portion of yeah. certain roads. I, I thought I said that, but maybe I didn't. Okay. Would you like me to read the motion? I sure. Have? Go ahead. I've done this so many years. Someone's going to make a motion to authorize the Mountain Tamer Snowmobile Club to use a portion of certain town roads on their snowmobiles to gain access to the Bass Trail for the 2023-2024 winter season as outlined in their listing and further <laughs> at a portion of the Cat Hill Road from the current trail crossing westerly to the Maple Corner store for 0.2 miles to access the store. I've been there, done that, right? So, <laughs> so, so let me quickly say so moved. <laughs> Work. So moved. <laughs> okay. Do we have a second? Thank second. you. Okay. Any further discussion on that? All right. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Steve. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Let us know. If well, have a thanks for all your work. Okay. Um, yeah. So the Curtis Pond Dam. Does everybody understand the next item? There's. Um, we pro they've been promised a hundred thousand. We've only spent whatever sixty nine eight eight six uh, minus a hundred subtracted from a hundred thousand is, and this would uh, obligate the or it would um, transfer the rest of the funds to the dam association. And this was a, my understanding. This was a recommendation <coughs> from um, the expert who's. Just a little concerned about federal clawback if it's not obligated sooner than later. And because this is such a large amount that hasn't been spent or obligated, that was the recommendation, and, just take care of it now. And to be clear, it's not to send the money to the CPA, it's transferring it from to the, the fund. ARPA fund to yeah. the Curtis Cohn fund. fund. Yeah. And this is something that was previously yeah. approved. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. Well, the, the Which we former had. select but the former select board had already allotted it, exactly. promised it, yeah. So it's not yeah. new. It was right. Yeah. yeah, and they've been counting on it. All right. Would somebody like to move that, Rose? You have the language right there in front of you. Yeah. So moved. Second. Would somebody like it? Okay. And Jamie Dylan seconds. Stand. All in favor? Aye. 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 Jamie, I presume you abstained. I abstained. Yeah. All right, next is the uh, meeting ballots. The, oh, here we are. Okay, so the Washington Central would like us to move to um, allow them to distribute ballots through mail. Um, apparently, all the towns have to do, uh, do the vote in exactly the same way or it's invalid, so they ask all the towns to do this, and we do it every year, I guess. Well, they ask if all the towns have to vote to do it this way. If all the towns don't agree to do it this way, then we all have to take care of our own ballots individually. Okay. Um, yeah, there right. are a number of ballots this year. For town meeting day, we'll have our town ballot, we'll have our presidential primary ballot, and we'll have ballots for each of the school districts. Um, the Career Center never mails ballots. It's always by request only. So if someone requests one, we'll mail it to them, but they never mail as a whole. The school likes to mail it out to everybody, but all the towns have to agree to that. If the town mails out, or if the school district mails out all its ballots, it offers to mail our town ballots with it. And then we, it ends up being about half the postage cost for us if we bundle that together and they get our town ballot with the school ballot. The primary ballot, you have to choose Republican or Democrat. Every voter does, so we can't just mail out a batch. People have to request the ballot, and then we mail them either Republican or Democrat, whichever one they choose. Um, so 
it's like a choose your own adventure. There's a lot of different ways this can go depending on how you want to. That's, that's actually the next item down here. Well, but I think it all goes. Yeah. You have to have a full picture. To well, is this okay with you? I think it's so. If, my recommendation is that we vote to let the schools mail their ballots and then we do piggyback on them and mail our town ballots with the school ballots and then make sure people are well aware and we're all going to field this question so i hope you all are okay with it why didn't i get my presidential primary ballot then you'll have to say because you have to choose democrat or republican and they'll say why and then you'll say because otherwise the national parties won't actually let us have a primary this is the only time any Vermonters ever have to say Democrat or Republican, and they could literally take the primary away from us if we don't do this during this primary. And there, there might be a progressive ballot too. Rosie said no progressive ballot. Okay. Not for the not for the presidential. Okay. There well, may be. We'll have to do this again then in August for the state primary. We have to. But in again, that case, you usually put both. In I think in August we can do both. We can do all yeah, just with the presidential, or we can't do it. Yeah. Right? Yes. That's right, so just presidential. So yeah. that's my recommendation. Given all that I know and what little I know, depending on how you want to look at it, that we have, we say yes to the school district and we send our town ballots with theirs all together and then we, Barbara and I will mail out uh, Republican, Democrat, and career center as requested. So well, so Tegan, thank you very much for that explanation because I was following that email chain and it, it, it seemed to get very uh, <laughs> nitpicky about words that seemed not important and very heated debate about who was going to participate in what and yeah. uh, not a constructive email exchange. Well, Rosie, um, Rosie has been the district, the school district clerk for a number of years and she knows her stuff. I actually. Melissa Tuller and the Worcester clerk and I had a meeting with Rosie on Friday so that she could give us the whole rundown of lead up to town meeting and after town meeting and here's all the things you need to know and make sure you hydrate and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Would somebody like to move the, um, the Washington County Unified School District ballot issue? I guess I have one more question. If we, oh. if we, if we take that action as recommended and the other towns don't do something similar, are we back to trying to figure out something different? That's when we figure out something different. I think, you know, in that case, we decide whether Barbara and I are gonna mail out all the school mm -hmm. district and all the, right? Right, or, or if we're not gonna mail them and they're by request only. And everything's by request only. We'll have to figure that out. Well, it seems fiscally prudent to try to combine it with the school. And That's what I think. Yeah. And everything Somebody will... should tell the rest of the towns <laughs> that that seems to be a fiscally For, prudent. Fortunately, thing. the five towns in WCU USD in the past have all agreed. Oh, okay. The, right. bigger, the bigger issue becomes with the Central Vermont Career Center School District. There's like 18 or 21 18 towns, towns yeah. and they don't agree. Right. So that's why she's saying that Two other school district yeah. will have to be by request only. Sure. And all these ballots will be available at town meeting too. If people don't ask ahead of time, we will have primary ballots and career center ballots. Well, thank you, Tegan. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm looking for a motion. Uh, I'll move that the town of Callis allow the Washington Central Unified School District to distribute the ballots okay. for yes. this, right? Yes. Yeah, as yeah. stated there. As stated. Yeah. Uh, Rose can just copy that motion. They want us to use that language specifically. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just move the language. Yeah. Move the language then. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Jamie seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Same issue now for, the, uh, for our own... Um, this is the school ballots. This is the, the town, town meeting ballots. Yeah. yeah. So that's all the all the Australian ballot issues. Which is not a lot of issues, but yeah. Well, it's the voting for select board, for it's, example, and all that. Okay. Would somebody like to move that issue? So moved, as written on the agenda. Does it need to be stated for the ORCA video? What what you're voting on? I move to authorize the Callis Town Clerk Tegan Dykeman Brown to arrange for the mailing of the 2024 town meeting ballots via USPS mail to all active, not challenged, registered voters on our town checklist. 
I'll second Jamie, Jamie's motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, thanks. All right, next up is the select board report. Have you all had a chance to look at draft two? This is, this is the report that we would put in the, um, the town report, report <laughs> from the select board. Um, and we've got a few pages here. Um, Anne, I think you have some changes to make. As far as adding people that were thinking and yeah. Yeah, like do you have that language? Which up the, I would really like to double double check on my contractors. I added a couple more. Oh, uh, okay. So maybe we're not ready. Barbara, you, you don't need even to need to vote on this. You guys, this is just a discussion. Just make just yeah. get your own notes. Same okay. page. Let's start with is everybody okay with the general frame here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we still need to flesh out. We need a few corrections to the to that piece. Jamie wants to look at the Curtis Pond piece and maybe edit that a little bit. I made a very tiny suggestion. In the okay, why don't you document. just do it in the document yeah. and send it to us. And Jordan, you're going to work on the IT piece. And mm -hmm. we'll try to have that. Barbara would like it by the 15th, right? Yes, and that is maybe. that. I will tell you, you guys are a full month ahead of where we've been in the last few years. <laughs> You guys rock. <laughs> so <laughs> that is the requested deadline. Most but I typically would get it in the, over the past few years in mid-January. So you have got a, a couple more weeks to work on this. And <coughs> I will stay in touch with Anne. You'll gather all these changes. Quickly. I will gather the changes if you guys will all send them to me. And, we'll, and I'll get them to Barbara as soon as we're ready. OK? You guys are doing awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks. Fire department, interlocal agreement. Has everybody had a chance to review that? Because we are going to the meeting on Thursday. And um, they're going to ask us to re redo that, to, uh, to authorize it. Does anybody have any comments on that? Um. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe I'll I'll see uh, I'll see what <laughs> see what time it is. I might I might be able to attend it and leave early. I guess. Um, okay. Well, I think Anne and Jamie yeah. and I are going, right? Not Jamie. I'm yeah. sorry. Not Jamie. Donnie. Yeah, I'm gonna try to. I think I can. Yeah. And if you can come, that would be terrific. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but do you feel okay about us signing the interlocal agreement as written? Did anybody have any specifics that you want us to bring up and discuss? I mean, I thought it spelled it out nicely. It's more concrete than like Woodbury. Yeah, we're just trying to rehash that conversation yeah. last week. Yeah. Um, I mean, as you said, there's pieces that we should have received, but it's like an all new. Okay, um, now, management group with the fire department as well. Now so. you're talking about something else. Um, yeah, they haven't. You'll if you've read the interlocal agreement, you'll see that item five is that before the first day of December, they're supposed to have sent us six documents. Of so far, they've sent us none. I called Albert Petrella today and asked him, you know, why haven't we got the documents? And he said, well. In the past, it's always been done by people who just recently resigned, and nobody here knows how to do it. <laughs> um, I don't know how we're going to do our business on Thursday. He did finally send us something about an hour ago. Not all these documents by any means, but at least it's a budget. And I guess we're just going to have to muddle through. He says he's trying to learn it, and he's trying to get his act together. And we'll just have to do the best we can. So in terms of the interlocal agreement, I had one thing. In number one, it, the, that last sentence, it talks about the initial term of the contract being one year, and then it's going to renew itself every year automatically unless we object to it renewing. Um, and then it says, effective September 2nd, 2021, this contract shall be reviewed by the parties at least every three years 
and shall not automatically review, renew more than two successive years. Why are we doing that? I kind of like it with it renews automatically unless we ask to look at it. But how do you guys feel about that? Oh, Rose, do you know uh, about this? Isn't that the way it used to be? Like I wrote it, <laughs> me and Paul Julia. You wrote that sentence? No, the, the whole thing. agreement, <laughs> the whole thing. And I was the administrative assistant for six years when this came to fruition. But this um, last sentence seems to have been added in 2021. Yeah, and it, in 2021, um, with the prior select board and Sharon Lynn Fannin um, and some others, they really wanted it only to go up every year. The, the initial contract when this began in 2008, I believe, um, it was recommended a 10 year and the actual document was five years. So for all those years, every five years, it just automatically renewed unless someone gave notice. Um, but that language that you're talking about is new and starting from 2021. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and why? Why did they yeah, feel they needed for, to do that? In my view, no reason. You know, <laughs> I see. They, you know, I mean, basically, the interlocal <laughs> agreement memorializes on paper what from 1964 till 2008 had been done with a handshake. Mm -hmm. And it was only because we were building a brand new firehouse that we said, someone's got to take a bond, it's going to be a big chunk of change, we really need to memorialize this and put it on paper. And so the fire department's attorney, the late Paul Giuliani, drew it up, and at that point I was the administrative assistant for the fire department. Um, and that's how this came to be. So I, I think it's a great document. I have no, no problem with it except for that one sentence. Yeah, I mean, and, and I, I would recommend that, you know, really, why do you need to change it every year? I mean, even every five years, let's, let's give a good look because you do have um, the annual meeting where you review the audit, you review their budget, and that happens in December. Um, but as far as fire suppression, emergency response, ambulance service, you know, I don't really think, you know, the town really needs to yeah. look at all yeah. this every single year. And I suspect East Montpelier would be fine taking that last piece out. But now Rose is saying something different. You'd replace it saying, Every five years we're going to well, review Well, that's what it? it used to be, up until 2021. It was a five year. Do you have that original language somewhere? <laughs> on my home computer with the thousands and thousands of other documents on it? I see. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is the upper limit that this board is interested in? Because you would explore that with them on Thursday night. Yeah. We could do that. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, I, I think that's something worth having a conversation with the organization around. You know, I think the, the intent of putting that in there would be to have a healthy review of the document, not necessarily to throw things up into the air every couple of years, but I think as we know at this point, it's just like there's so much regular business to conduct as a town when these things come up. It's just, it's a knee-jerk approve it and move on last year was good enough and so it seemed like an effort to put some sort of mechanism in there but that mechanism isn't really going to get used just as much as any other one so and there's already one in there to say that they want to provide notice of of review um so what are you recommending are you recommending leaving it as is no i'm i'm I mean, one, I guess what has concerned me through this budgeting process and the way that the conversations with the departments have evolved is we came into some very charged <laughs> circumstances uh, where, where folks were not happy with our level of engagement. We were cut off, you know, caught off guard by a lot and now we're getting into the budgeting process and we just had two presentations of preliminary budgets that didn't really mean much and had a bunch of errors and so while we're trying to make a plan for next year's budget you know there's 
we're going to approve a budget at the next meeting and show up to the meeting. And, and I appreciate how much work all of us are doing and how much work they do, but it, it's a little frustrating to feel like as a select board member, I have to attend all of the extra meetings and participate in all of the extracurricular conversations when there's a document that says, please, please present these things in a timely fashion. I mean, they're there for a reason. It's for our budgeting process. <laughs> you know, we need to get ahead of it. Um, so I, I guess I just would want some teeth, I guess, in saying like, what do you what do you do to shake people? Say like, this is really important to our process to make sure that you're making good on on some of the conditions of it. You know, that's that's just that's just basic planning stuff. Yeah. I, you know, there's. There's no gripe with the level of service or commitment to the uh, to the agreement, you know. But we need to have a way of having a conversation in, in like a productive way. And right now, it doesn't seem like there's a habit of doing that. And I, I think that they would be open to it, like with Woodbury. I mean, they sent us all of that information, and it was very helpful. And I think we'll receive it every month. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think that Albert too will be because you know they're a new, they're a whole new like we're all new and so. Yeah, I mean he didn't even know he was supposed to do an audit, um, and he hasn't done an audit. Um, but he says he's learning, and he promises to do better. Right. I, I mean I I don't know what else to do other than give them a little more time to figure it out. We could also put it in our calendar to reach out in October or something. <laughs> yeah. And say, hey, that's exactly. check in. Or we yeah. can peel that out. So right now, the, the, if we peel out the last sentence and where it says it's going to re, uh, renew annually uh, and that notice of non-renewal, -re -re we could also just put in language in there about review so a not a, a notice of non -renew, uh, renewal or um, or review gets done with three months notice does that make sense to open up the door for a process you're, for are you referring to section one or section, section one five? yeah section one yeah. So it seemed like your interest was to get the budget information in a more timely way, which is more about Section 5. Mm -hmm. And I think, like with us, and I, because I know even when I reached out way back when we started this process, they're like, ah, both fire departments, we don't do that, you know, our timeline is, is this, and our timelines tend to be pretty close, so I think we get their final product around the same time we're also supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Yep. I know their final way. budget was just approved last Wednesday. Greg brought it home. I yeah. said, did you send that to the select board? No, they'll get it on the 14th. And that's, yeah. I think so the piece of budget changed. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we should talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, but meanwhile, I'm wondering what to do about this interlocal agreement. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it means to say we'll review it. I mean, we can review it anytime we want. Um, I'd just as soon strike that last sentence. Or replace it with language that we'll look at it every five years, if that makes sense, just to make sure we do it. But I'm not clear. Is that is that contrary to what you're saying, Jordan? No, not at no. all. No. Okay. Um, no. All right. I'm just trying to define a process for Right, define a path, I guess, for you know, calling mm -hmm. for review of it. Okay. okay. That that doesn't okay. that isn't saying like, well, here's three uh, three months notice on uh, you know interest to you know terminate the agreement unless we sit down and have a conversation. You know, like that. Uh, if there were a path forward that says, you know, this isn't a notice of termination of the agreement. We just want to have a formal sit down um, to, to do so, just providing a path for it. I didn't see anywhere in here where there is a path for that other than, you know, we can just review it at any, its terms at any point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the form
formal sit down is every December because you're okay. meet three times a year with the select board and the you know, have to, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. so. Okay. All right. Well, it, it, yeah. that, that's probably enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we'll have the discussion together on uh, Thursday. The, the one other thing that caught my attention that probably is irrelevant was the first sentence of Section 2 that says each town designates these Montpelier as the primary provider of these services. Is that... How is, 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 are they primary and Woodbury is secondary, or...? They're primary EMS, and pragmatically, they usually both end up in town. Yeah. Right. It's just that like language struck me as funny. In the village, yeah, I mean, too. at least on my side of town, that's but, how it works. Well, we sort of treat equally. E well, e East Montpelier Fire Department also has mm -hmm. ambulance service, right. and Woodbury does, does not. not. Yeah, yeah, but it says primary provider of fire, fire suppression. suppression. Right. So that's what, okay. yeah. Probably neither here nor there, but it just caught me as a little bit strange language. Like Woodbury came out one time, we're off to the next month. It could be <laughs> instead of the primary, it could be a primary. There we go. Right, it says it's primary. <laughs> There's <Anyway>. an idea. <laughs> I think they're going to go here. Semantics. Guys, this is just a grammatical error. <laughs> right. You guys are just Anything else? Okay. It'll be fun Thursday night. Um, okay, child care payroll tax. You heard us talking a little bit about that with Mark, and you saw there's a document in your folder explaining that it's a 0.44% tax on payroll effective next July. We can either pay the entire tax or we can charge up to 0.11% and take it out of the employee's wages. Have I said that right, everybody else who understands this? Okay, do you guys all understand that? Or we can take less than 0.11%. We could take point, I don't know, 0.5%, I suppose. What do you guys wanna do? Do you have the numbers written down for how much, how much that constitutes in the budget? No, I don't. I Can really need to ask the car is now. Point one one is six hundred and sixty dollars for the entire year. For all that, the people. That's estimated. So, so, so if it's is that for if, all the employees, yes. Yeah. All the wages. If if the town did the entire point four four, it would be two thousand six hundred forty. So you can shave up to six hundred sixty off that. And the budget assumes the full amount currently. Anybody have an opinion? Okay. So I'm gonna is it taking it off of the employees as a payroll tax or just assuming we it. eat it? Or how is, I guess. If it. we decided to take, say, 0.11% out of the wages, that we'd, we would reduce their check by that amount mm -hmm. and send it to the state. We would reduce their check by six hundred and sixty dollars a year mm -hmm. per person. No, no, no. Totally. altogether. Totally. Totally. Oh, that's right. That's right. So per person would be less than a hundred dollars. It's like six cents a pay period. Or I mean, you can take it from mine. I think someone should pay for child care. It's hard. So. <laughs> What, and, and I should let you know, we haven't talked about this with the employees union, and I don't know exactly how they would respond if the decision were to put some on, on you know, have them contribute. Well, it's an obligation to everyone, isn't mm -hmm. it? I thought that's how it was. It, it, the, the town has no choice but to pay the full amount. Mm -hmm. it, it's saying that the employee employer has the option of charging up to 0.11 percent, but um, that that is terms and conditions of employment, mm -hmm. and the bargaining unit has a right to. I don't know exactly. I, I, you know, they might say you have to negotiate with us about that. 
So, Kari, is this in the budget now? Yes. The, so the, the full amount. The 260, 2640 is in the budget as we voted on it. Yes. Yeah, Sandra put it in there a while ago. Good for good. She's good. <laughs> so I'm inclined to just pay it. How about you guys? I agree. How would just pay it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do we need a, to vote on that? Probably I, we do. I think so. Okay. Will somebody move it? So the motion. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, have the t town pay a full portion of the payroll tax associated with child care. Child care. Child care payroll tax. Yeah. Payroll tax. Okay. As it's currently proposed in the town budget. <laughs> of point four four percent. Okay, so the town is one twenty four. Yeah. Yes, please. No, I, I think you have to say of 0.44%, because oh, it, it's possible it could change, somebody could... 0.44%. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Rose? Yeah, should we also say um, the employees don't have to contribute? I, that would be the full portion, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, okay. I, don't, I don't know that we need to say it in the um, minutes. Are you thinking people would like to know that? Yeah, what I did okay. was I went on the web, on the tax department website and I copied and pasted <laughs> what it was um, so that I was clear, so that I knew about what this was. So I just have to tweak it a little bit. So what does it say on the website? Act 78 of 2023, an act relating to the child care oh, and early God. childhood I'm education. I'm sorry, I thought it had a motion. I'm sorry, I thought it had a Yeah, but no, it's called child care contribution, so they're calling it CCC. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's what it is. It's 0.44% payroll tax on wages, um, and employers have to pay that, or you can have the employees pay up to 25% of it. Which is 0.11. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, we have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. Donnie seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks. Um, there's a lot on this one. This... So, ARPA allocations. Um, Kari, we're not sure. There, you sent a list here, which I don't think the others got, of all the ARPA um, promises. And we don't know if there might be a little more still in the ARPA basic Correct. ARPA fund. Yeah, I think we're just dealing with these two tonight, and we can go in a little okay. bit. Okay. I mean, that, that relates to the next comments, and Sandra is, is going to dig into this more this month, and we'll have and, more information. And get there. that. Okay. So, so far, we've, we've given CB Fiber the $200,000. We've given, we've spent the costs the 20000 We've given Nick the emergency management grants, and we think he may have a little left. And did the sixty thousand go to the East uh, Mont? Uh, sorry, the East Calais Fire District. They, they haven't spent it yet. So they don't have that money yet. I don't believe so. No. Do you know what that was for? Yes, it was for updating the mainline pipes in the East Calais Village. Okay. So that leaves two other items: this traffic calming road design study which um, Kari checked with Rick Keene, they, was, they didn't do it. Right, and, and in, what he said was the select board, this was the select board's decision, their project, they weren't even very clear about the scope of it. There was a sense that they wanted to cover the whole town, he favored doing the problem areas, you know, where they, I guess they spent a lot of time on, on you know, so, you know uh, speed limits. And so this was meant to address that, but um, my sense is that there's no one, you know, that's dying for this project to happen. It's just a study, right? And, and come up with, not the speed limit study, but the in engineering ways to reconfigure the roads so as to slow people down in certain areas. So that was $30,000. And the other one is an invasive species study to the Conservation Commission, and Kari checked with Larry Bush. And, and Larry said the commission is not expecting this. They were not preparing. Um, they, were, they were unaware, I think, that they had <laughs> slug board had allocated this to it. And that's 15000 So that's 45000 
<laughs> and we're looking to find some money to, for a down payment on a boom mower. And a Which lot of, will help with invasive species. Right. I had a chat with Larry Bush about this too, and uh, got about the same response you did, um, and, and pointed out that, um, that that allocating it for the boom mower would um, help address issues of uh, you know uh, invasives. And we talked a little bit about. Um, wanting to work with the Conservation Commission uh, as we're looking at roadside mowing schedules and practices to, to make sure the town is using the best uh, best practices around invasives control. Um, and he thought that sounded great and was an easy sell to the commission. Um. Uh, so I uh, spoke with Sandra earlier today. I wanted to be clear that it's as simple as the board, you know, redesignating this this money, and that's, it sounds like it is. We agreed to that um, using the mimicking the language that you just did for the um, uh, the dam fund uh, oh, because that came from Katie Buckley, the expert on our part. Uh, would probably be the best thing. So I have a suggestion. The other thing we talked about um, was. You could be very specific and allocate it to the boom mower. You could allocate it to the um, capital equipment fund, the highway department, or something else. Um, our, our suggestion is the highway capital equipment fund, and that way it can be used on the boom mower. Um, is that be. okay under the ARPA um, regulations? It does, doesn't have to be for a specific item? That's my understanding, is it can be that general. Oh. I wasn't okay. Yeah. So you have some language. So for us? so what we came up with is uh, move to obligate the town of Callis's um, ARPA funds previously designated. Did I say obligate? Move to obligate the town of Callis's ARPA funds previously designated for an invasive species study and a traffic calming road design study to the Highway Capital Equipment Fund and authorize the treasurer to trans transfer these funds from the ARPA fund to the Highway Capital Equipment Fund before the close of the calendar year. Do you need to say the amount, the 45000 We could certainly add that. <laughs> it, it, does, it does in the one that we yeah. just voted on. It has the amount I thought it did. Yes. So the one we just okay. voted on said, I move to obligate the town of Calus remaining ARPA funds in the amount of... And you're emailing that motion to Rose? Yes. Great. So okay. I'm adding in the amount of 45000 would someone like to move that? So moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Any more discussion? Everybody like the idea? Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Wow. Okay. That's, That's great, you guys. <laughs> um, which is fortuitous because what, one of the things Toby had told us when he was talking about finding the down payment was that we're not making, he thought, the $42,000 payment on the one of the trucks this year. He called me from San Diego to say, oops, it turns out we are making a payment, I mean next year. So we don't have that 42000 to play with as Toby thought. And so, there we go. So Easy we're, coming to get one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's move on to the boom mower. Um, let's see, we talked about, um, how, let me see, uh, which one is that? That would be the second of the You want me to frame it up? So, so last time yeah, we, we okay. talked about essentially putting 50000 down and financing yeah. 80. Financing 80 over five years. And, and uh, Toby has three options here, which is um, the, making the first payment this year, and then the annual payments are, are the lowest, 18324 for five years. Or we could put the 50 down and defer the first payment until a year from now, and that pushes the annual payment up to 19658 That's an additional $6,700 in interest total. Okay, And the third option is just to put 30 down and make the first payment next year, and that pushes the payment to almost twenty-five thousand. That's an additional eleven thousand. 
and interest. So if we're going to spend the 45000 and we have it, why wouldn't we just do that right now? I guess my one concern would be that to, then, uh, to make the payment on top of that this year, so option A, um, would be taking that out of our reserve fund, which well, unless, unless it's available in this year's budget, but I'm not sure. But if we move it right now to the highway equipment fund, isn't it available? The down payment is. Yes. Yeah. And then, and then, do we make, do? Then the question is, option A or B? Do we want to make that first payment this year? Okay, ten thousand. When you say this year, do you mean fiscal year or do you mean this, calendar year? Like this month. Oh. That's that's what option A is. Oh, okay. Says. Fifty now and a first payment in December. So, sixty-eight thousand this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hadn't Toby found? I thought he had found close to seventy, which we know some of that forty-five of that. Close to the truck. Close to the truck, but then we should still be sitting pretty close to 70 with this 45, yeah. Or did I misunderstand? No, I think that makes sense, because didn't he find two different things that money wasn't being spent on? There are two trucks. There is right, the two we'll, we'll, There was one where it had gotten, one that had been purchased, but the receipt was delayed, so it pushed into fiscal 25, uh, 25, yeah. no, uh, 24. We're in now. We're, we're in, in no, 24 now. 24. And then yeah, so international or something, we didn't, I don't know, I thought it was 70. So 45. Yeah, yeah 70, 72, you're right. Okay, so it was an oopsie to 45, but that means we should still have yeah, yeah, 72 right. by, so I would, so I less we interest is better if we went with that. Absolutely. Option A. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the, best option assuming we have that flexibility in this fiscal year's budget. Yep. And we can do we can do it well, we've got a week, I guess. Sandra can figure that out. Yep. Okay. Yep. Would somebody like to move that? Is there any concern yeah. about any other extracurricular expenses and how close you know, there have been a couple of repairs that were happening with trucks. Are we concerned about any other repairs coming up? Mid, mid at this point, the truck should all be like basically rebuilt. <laughs> 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 well, the ones that are warranted, I mean, John's truck is back and doing yeah. well. I mean, they have we're, some. I mean, we're always concerned about repairs. There. I, I yeah. don't know that we're concerned about something needing to be replaced this year. You know, I mean, we have nothing to, catastrophic. Not like replaced, like, on, yeah. Like major repairs. Repair like, yeah. Okay. I, I think we're okay with it. <clears throat> Donnie, you want to make a motion? Sure. Uh, I I've been listening to you guys trying to figure this out. <laughs> That's why I just second everything. <laughs> oh, okay. I figured you understood this one the best. Mm -hmm. I understand the money part. <laughs> okay. I move to go with, what do we want to call it? Option A for the boot mower. <laughs> First of all, I guess we're going to move to, we already did, did we move the funds already? Yeah. 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 We did that. Okay, so now we've got the funds in the equipment fund. So you're moving, I think, to take 40, should we do 45,000 or should, do we need to do 50, 50 for this? I move to take 50,000 out of the highway equipment fund and use it to make a down payment on, on the Massey Ferguson, Ferguson uh, okay. boom mower. So I move to take fifty thousand out of the highway. What did you capital think? fund? Capital equipment fund. fund. Equipment yeah. fund for the down payment of the boot mower, the Massey Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> so option. And, and do you want? Do you want it in the motion before the end of the, the calendar year? Yeah. And, and it's a part of the motion and that we make the first payment this year. Yes. This calendar year. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Does everybody understand the motion? Especially Rose. <laughs> yeah. I think if you could also just text 
email me some of that text you were talking about, like what option A is, and sure. just some other stuff. So that's the one where we, the first payment is due December 15th. Right. Okay. Um, and uh, I guess you'd better, as part of that motion, authorize one of us to sign it. Who wants to sign it? Well, Ann works there all the time because she never has power. So she's, <laughs> 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 she's there pretty frequently. Or so I authorize Ann to yeah. sign it. Ann Winchester. Ann you Winchester. gotta say that or it won't be clear. <laughs> okay. Ann Winchester to sign it. To sign the agreement, yeah. And I have a copy of it here. Did you say the first payment is due Jack, December 15th? Well, yeah, so it might be fair. And so to you'll let Karen, you'll let Sandra know if she needs to process sure. a check. What does accepted? I don't understand this. Uh, it says acceptance. As a duly authorized agent of Callus, I hereby accept the proposal as outlined above and intend to close this financing with NCSL subject to approval. Accepted. And then name. So it's uh, accepted would be your signature and date. Oh, that's, I see. Name. And that would mean I would print my name. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Thank you. So, um, okay. so the incentive to, to pay the before the calendar year is purely from NCL on the, on an interest rate? Otherwise, I don't see why. I, I, don't, I don't think that this is tied to the calendar year. The ARPA reallocation was just because of the clawback concern. This is, they proposed these dates. I'm sure they would be happy to sell us this next week as well. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. Okay, are we done with the boom mower? Then we we're needed. We didn't, did we second in the eye already? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I will second, second it if we are all satisfied with the motion. All in, fa okay. yes. okay. all in favor. Yes, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay, thanks. And I guess this goes to you, Kari? Please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now we get to the budget. So, call out your budget here. Um, Kari, how do you suggest we do this? Shall we jump right to the highway portion? Yeah, I think we left off of yep. getting on the highway. I'm still half asleep. Okay. I don't see, I'm, I'm looking through this, Kari, I didn't see much we could play with here. I would agree with that. Um, wages and benefits, I don't see anything where we have any discretion we, right. whatsoever. Other than the number of employees, and we, we talked about this a bit last time. I, you know, we're, Donnie and Toby and I are going to interview some folks on Saturday, and there is an internal candidate to be the foreman. Um, and hopefully that all works out, and that would leave us potentially with, with three full-timers and two part-timers which would provide us the luxury of five drivers on a day like today. That's what happened today, which is a great thing. I don't think I'm confident enough in that model to say, let's go ahead and budget for it next year. There's just too many variables, including the part-timers and, and all of that. So I would not recommend um, eliminating a position from this at this time. But hopefully it's something we can work towards. Well, you've got 2000 for a temporary. Would you take that out then? Uh, I think you could take it out. You know, Toby wanted to hang on to that. Um, I don't see how we're going to use that. That wouldn't be covered by, um, you know, wages and benefits for other employees. And then would you increase the highway wages to cover another person, or does that already include that person? No. It, it, the five positions is, should be enough to get us through a season, and um, you know, might be more than enough. But I don't really understand why we left the 2,000 in that temporary, because I don't think we'll need it, and if we do, it'll be because we're not paying normal wages and benefits to somebody. So be, should we take it out, or do you want to leave it in there? I think, just I think to, we could do that. Okay. Great.
Um, Can Rose, I ask a question? Mm -hmm. I see that somebody's joined on Zoom. Should we get that person's name yeah. so Rose can put it in the minutes? What do you say? Okay. Anything else on wages and benefits? Um, just, just pause a second. And whoever is Andy's iPhone, could you unmute, please? Hey. Andy, Mike, please. can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Andy, please. It's Andy, please. Yeah, it's Andy, please. Just check out the meeting. Great. Great. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, yeah, you too. All right, Andy, I, we're working on the bu highway budget now. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say with wages, because it looks like we still have the road format at 27, and had you not um, yeah, we that to 30. pumped it to 30, is that reflected in the wages or not yet? It is. Okay. My, my copy says 30, did yours say? Yeah, okay. it says 30. I say 27, too. Am I on the wrong copy? Oh, oh, yeah, there's a new, it's dated 12-11-2023. Yeah. So that amount becomes seventy one eight seventy three. Yeah, including overtime. And then, you know, there may be an opportunity to reduce overtime. I don't know. There's <laughs> the storms. I mean, it's a weekly event now. There's some long days going on. Yeah, I think that I think it's one thing that if the if the overtime hours are relative to plowing and that sort of thing, but. You know, I think we're right. managing overtime hours throughout the year, and there's an allocation of a certain amount of overtime hours. I would think that the, those would be allocated differently, you know, mm -hmm. to other employees that are less expensive than the oh. foreman, okay. um, to the extent that it can be. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the one question I had there was uh, the thirty uh, three percent uh, cola that's associated with that mm, formula there. That's in the contract. So we'd be getting 30 until next okay, July. Yeah. And then that goes up 3%. And then it would go up 3%. Um, so that's not seem right to you? So I, you I, think it's, I thought it was 3. Yeah, maybe it was left at cold. I thought we did... Uh, yeah, flat percentages. I don't think we were calling them colas. I think we were just they were oh, just uh, yeah. oh yeah, maybe cola's not the right term. Yeah, it, you know, it's a negotiated agreement. It, yeah, but I, I just want to be careful how we list things in, in various records okay. because originally that was proposed as a as a cola plus three percent, um, oh, and okay. and so I don't want I don't want anything to come back and okay, so maybe better to take cola out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Anything else under wages and benefits? Is 500 enough for education and training? They do quite a lot. Um, a lot of that education is free, ah. but they have been asking for um, more like first aid training and, and I, those things might cost. I try to get it through local roads. Um, I'm actually going to check with Red Cross to see about doing this CPR. Uh, the Stop the Bleed training, I believe, is free. So you think it's okay to leave it there? So the other thing that we added into the contract was uh, the town covering the cost of uh, uh, um, CDLs and renewals. Uh, yes. Oh, and that is something we might need to consider cheap. Um, and that's annual, I think? Uh, Biannual. Biannual. Yeah. And I don't know where it would fall under it might be education, but Peter um, had expressed a willingness to get a the higher level CDL, currently John and Dana are the only ones that have it, um, and Dana's a part-timer, so it would help having okay. someone else who has the... So, it, it's interesting because I just saw an invoice today for CDL, it was 125, I believe. I wonder if, if this is a new provision in the contract that Sandra has it accounted for, maybe not. So would it be okay if it's not that we had a figure in there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think we're going to have to. We'll come up with an estimate. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think so. The the only thing right now that we've kind of committed to uh, the contract is uh, to renewals, and then for anybody who's hired without a CDL to um, contribute towards them achieving one. I don't know that we necessarily uh, put anything specific in there about um, like John's situation where it'd be more a more enhanced one. Um, so I, I think we could be fought. Pretty conservative, I think, for at least the next fiscal year. Yeah. Th those are only going to be, you know, one hundred twenty-five dollars a pop for a handful of guys. So we can take it out of that five hundred, or we can use, increase that five hundred another five hundred dollars. Yeah, I'll go to that. Address. If that was a number at all. Yeah. Danny, are they one hundred twenty? It depends on where you go. Okay. Um, I don't know. Where did did they individually go to their own place and then the town reimburse them or does the town? Yeah, reimburse? it's a reimbursement. Yeah. yeah. So I go to Cassentra and I think mine was like ninety eight dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for two years or for four? Two. Yeah. Yeah. I'm they're, seeing a variety of numbers when I'm googling, yeah. but they're, they're all, all below one hundred. So they're so all yeah. standard at two years unless you have a medical reason why your doctor won't give it to you for two years and at that point they can give you a one month a six month a, a year you're talking about the dot physical that is a that is what we're talking about isn't it cdl I, exam 125 dollars. that's at the dmv right no this is a vermont cdl exams llc oh, so KBA did somebody exam. did somebody take the take the test recently i guess but this is a very oh, experienced yeah. driver i know john renewed his did he get another endorsement you, you don't pay for the renewal of their license. No, but you have to retake the exam? No. 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 Once you have it, you're done. Hmm. Unless you give it up. Okay. Well, is that the CDL place that's on the very month labor road that, uh, that they do their, like their physical, uh, their health exam? It's probably the same. Yeah. So that sounds oh. like they probably, yeah. I mean, that's what the billboard says, you know, annual medical exams or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. it sounds like they might be charging. Charging more than what Concentra does, but okay. if we're paying for it, we could direct folks to go somewhere <laughs> and, and get a contract. I know Concentra works pretty pretty closely with employers um, yeah. for all kinds of services. So, is that mandatory though for municipalities to have a DOT physical? I know it's not required for the state. I think it Independent is. Independent people. I think it yeah. is for the town, but not this, not the state. That's no, what I was well, asking. Are maybe not. Two physicals? I think that sometimes if people have um, certain things, they would need to go more often. Yeah, no, that's not my question. Okay. No, I know what you're saying. I I understand because yeah. the state the state drivers do not have to have right, a DOT. Right. But physical. I thought I thought the municipal ones were didn't have to have it. It's not a requirement. That? But I could be wrong. Um. Yeah, because of all the years on the select board, I, I never heard them talking about these DOT physicals. Getting your license renewed from the DMV is one thing, but going to Concentra and having a DOT physical, and you get this thing called a medical card, that's a whole different ball of wax. If you're subject to the federal motor carrier safety regulations, you must have a physical every two years. Physical must be performed by a nationally certified examiner. So municipalities but, are required? That, this is the Vermont State website. It doesn't say municipalities. I think it's anyone who's a federal motor carrier safety regulation person. Right, the state, but to maintain... The state drivers aren't required. But to maintain the, uh, the CDL, they have, to, they have to get the exam. Well, I think what, what, what Rose is saying is that they might be exempt from that, so the only time that they would be susceptible to having that would be if they're driving outside of the town, meaning they're not working for the town at that time. They're driving, so, you know, come drive my truck type idea. So they might not have to have them through the town. Because she's saying state, the state does not require any of their drivers to have one. So it doesn't sound like we need to add that in to the budget. I don't think so. Um, Not only that, we, there's only five people, so if you go to the right place, it'll be under $500. Okay. <laughs> right. 
All right. Can we move on from total wages and from wages and benefits, or is there any more on that piece? At, at the moment, we're going to leave the um, education and training at 500, but we're going to look into cost of CDL and how often, and may change it. Okay. The, I can the, find that out tomorrow. Okay. Whether they are or not, because I know a few of the road foremans, and they would know that, yep. whether they have to actually pay them or not. Sorry to interrupt you, Jamie. The HRA highway is for five full-time. Is that? No, only for those who are taking it. Um, yeah, th this budget is based on five full-time people. Okay. And, oh. and one of them opting out. Opting out. Yeah. Right. Maybe that won't be the case. Right. But, but this it's good to die. budget for it, just yeah. in case. Okay. okay. All right. Road okay. maintenance. I think Toby's really sharpened his pencil on this, and he got it down. Well, we took the roadside mowing out. Remember that was twenty-eight. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's right. That was twenty-eight, and yet we only decreased it by two thousand seven hundred. Okay, I take back what I said. <laughs> 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 um, anybody see anything there? Okay, vehicle main equipment maintenance and fuel. Boy. Mm -hmm. There, we also had a decrease. Oh, oh. Why do we have a decrease? This is, this is the actual Fuel is down. I'm not, I'm not sure what the story is. So that's what it's like. <coughs> is fuel uh, cheaper, diesel yeah, fuel? No, I, I think that, that went back to the conversation around the, uh, the conversation about replacing the truck with the diesel truck. So we were going to be living out of our shop diesel supply as opposed to paying oh. for gas for one of the trucks. Which, yeah, we purchased that truck as a one ton pickup truck. Okay. So I guess that is what it is then. Uh, town garage. Kind of flatlined there. What are we? Uh, we're only salting the county road, right? Well, well any of the salts. paved portions, but the county road is by far the longest. Lightning so Ridge. Lightning Ridge. Yeah, a little yeah, piece on the Marshfield Ridge, Road. The little, the little bit in front of the post office, and then up. From East Callis up to Marshfield, Marshfield Road. Road. Did anybody yeah. see that article on the brining? Yeah, uh, yeah. they had a thing on NPR too. Yeah, doesn't really apply to us, does it? No, we don't have that scale. No. Well, I, no, I wasn't necessarily saying you know, we should purchase the equipment. I was just saying purchase the brine and save on the salt. <laughs> <clears throat> but I think it okay. requires some uh, truck equipment up mm -hmm. fitting too. Okay, moving on to insurance. I don't think we have any, um, uh, nothing we can do about those increases. Yeah, part of that is due to um, more hours in the budget, right? Because our last year's budget only had four people. So we're presenting more oh. here. And then rates went up. And that's just based on experience, you know. This is all through the passive, which is a division of the league. And so we do get rebates, you know, we're in some mutual situation, but these are the new rates. Uh, highway grant expenses. Do we get reimbursed for these? These are our portion of the grants that we're receiving. Well, for example, I thought on the Kent Hill scoping, we didn't have any obligation under that one. But now I see we've got an $11,000 obligation. Those documents we signed just didn't say anything about a match. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> I don't okay. think there being a match. I believe. I thought it was a match that was getting paid out of the ARPA. For the Kent Hill scoping? It's not on the list. Mm. Mm. I do not. Mm. I, I can get some clarity on that. 
And um, there's a lot of question marks by the French mattress. <laughs> <laughs> and why is that? <laughs> Well, I think in part there's reticence on the part of the road crew that they believe their equipment is not adequate to do the job. It involves some very large rocks. There's concerns about how they're going to stage it. It's a marshy area. So to be able to get someone to come and bring the materials like giant rocks and have them staged there and then they could do it. Can we get them from the Curtis Vaughn Dam? Huh? Those That's are a little bit big. <laughs> those are a little bit big. Yeah, I think those are too big. Yeah. Uh, well, no, they, they were, were like size five. I don't uh, know. No, those were eight foot minus. Yeah. Eight eight foot there was minus one eight. rock per truck. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> 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 All right. Some big rocks. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's up in the air on whether or not they've got the Those the should capacity. be four foot. Mm -hmm. How, going in, I think how are we going to get get clarity on that one? Has that already been in, like engineered or anything, or is it just kind of a general scope of the project? I mean, it's written mm -hmm. out like it would be from X point to X point, and but I don't know that they have like an engineering company or something come in and do it. I think. I just wonder with like the amount of work that. You know, I know Toby was saying that there's a lot of work and a lot of roads and mileage that got improved and that we can, you know, focus on a big project next year, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But like, I, I think there was a lot of deferred maintenance that mm -hmm. that we skipped this year. Road, you know, mowing, it was one of them. I think there's a lot of roadside work yeah. across the entire town that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, considering the specialization of that particular project, I wonder if that could just be tabled for like a a three year kind of I don't know. And I think take it out of the budget for now. Happy to have it contracted out. I mean we do have sixty thousand, just under sixty thousand dollars in matching not matching, but in grant funds um, well, for here, road work between okay. what was waived this year and, and what we were given for next year. Which and there's are, and that's with the segments. Right. Which roads are those for? The loose road? No, so they're not listed here. So you okay. go and you, I can show you that one that we had done for this year, but you identify uh, portions of roads that need extra dishing or water needs to move better, crowding, all those sorts of things, basic road stuff for the most part, but that's connected to but water. But there are places that, that are wet, right? They're, that have more water. That's what yes, that are connected to, although yeah. you can include non-segmented uh, portions, because like if it's going down a hill, you want to capture everything coming oh. down, otherwise okay. it ruins what you're doing. But, but that would allow us to really spruce up the parts of town that didn't get taken care of, because some roads we made beautiful, but then other roads really got a whole lot of nothing, mm -hmm. except for like one pass of the lawnmower they were looking. So, I don't well, know how long we can hold on to the French mattress money, but... That's what I was going to ask. I think it the looks guys like would be... I would probably prefer to have it um, fitted out. I think you're going to spend a lot more money. Yeah, it's going to be way more expensive. I think, I think, I think you should have it so cheap because it? we can, like... If we, we got a certain amount of credit for using our own labor for that. Is that mm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think... Uh, you you contract the the trucking of the bigger rock out so that you don't destroy their trucks because mm -hmm. those chains are very expensive. I think you contract that part out and let okay. them do the work. And will five thousand cover that? No. <laughs> oh gosh, it costs a lot. I mean, I'd ha I'd have to actually see how like how long of a section it is and what. Yeah. I'll exactly. It is. I mean, is this day. is this project uh, calendared for? It was calendared summer? for this year. Oh, it is. Okay. I thought um, this was just the engineering. Yeah, so. but I mean, there'll be a lot of pieces. We need to close that section of road off entirely because I know there was discussions about doing it in segments or doing it all in one length and doing it all in one length because it's wrapped in the fabric. Right. How long is it? Oh God, I want to say like three hundred. It's. It's, is it the, it's the whole stretch, but 
Marshall. Yeah, it's fiber that has a yeah. problem, yeah. and the power thing is. It used to be. Yeah. I think it's pretty basic. Yeah, my recommendation would be to not knowing much about this project, but leave it in there and let's have Toby come in and explain yeah, I think so. and we can talk about the various options mm -hmm. for saving okay. our equipment, saving money, so on. Okay. So we're gonna ask Toby, will he be back on the eighteenth? I mean we were gonna be back uh, Thursday actually. He'll be back Thursday. We may have to have a meeting of I hope a short one on the eighteenth to finish up these little odds and ends. Yeah if that's all right, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So let's not change anything there for now. Um, anything else on highway grant expenses? The East Callis Bridge, that's silver at Moscow, the oh Moscow Woods Oh my gosh, Bridge. are we ever going to do that? Are we finally, I mean, I see there's 10,000 in here, and we've got a grant of 100,000. Yeah. To do it? I, mean, I don't know if they've been back, or I, I don't know where Toby was able to get with that over the summer. I mean, we, to my knowledge, gosh, I think back when Rick was still on this like board, okay. the Wolf had been over and looked at it, but I don't know that they were back to look at it this oh. summer. We just had to say, Toby, like, mm -hmm. well, then that's one again to ask Toby about yeah, it. Yeah, because that would be, because that one definitely needs something. Capital expenses. He says, this this is where the 42,000 is. You see that, the 2023 West Star Dump 10 Wheeler. Wheeler. Um, that money actually needs to be bumped into, it was purchased, and we do need to pay that this year. So we need to add 42,000 into this. Or, or we can take it out of the reserve fund, right? We just added 40,000 to the reserve fund. Well, I thought we added it to pay for the boom mode. Well, we, we already have um, a certain amount in the reserve fund. I have to look that up, but more than Yeah, 30. yeah. Um, we'll have to, I think that's another one for next time then. And, and then the good news is we are going to be able to reduce the, there's 23 in here for the mower, and we got that down to 18 something. That's awesome. Yeah. So. Okay. Yes, you have more, that's principal, you've got 20, yeah, that's what you were talking about. So that's 2,000, it's not 42,000, but it's something. So I think we're going to have an increase there, aren't we? Or we're likely to, but maybe you'll find it. Okay, so I think we're gonna to have to come back to this next Monday. You all okay with meeting next Monday? As long as it doesn't snow. <laughs> These late Monday nights are <laughs> yeah. full of coffee. It's not snowing. Full of coffee. It's so bad. Okay. Um, social service appropriations. Everybody's level funded here, right? There's a new one. No. Uh, Old West Church came down. Oh, uh, somebody came up. I don't. I don't have it in front of me. I, I emailed it to everybody. Old West Church is down a lot. Well, they asked for a bunch well, of their because last year was their two hundredth anniversary, okay. and so they asked for a big one, and they brought it back down. But so not everybody's level funded, and there's a new one that got added this year. But I I emailed that out to everybody. Washington Central. Friends of Education. Right, that was like the new one. one. It's eight hundred dollars. But then Washington County Diversion Program for three hundred is not in again. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. So it's a down <laughs> what a, about a thousand dollars. If you add in the four thousand that we paid to Curtis Pond Association for the hand railings, which was not requested or budgeted last year, we're down over five thousand dollars but from what was requested last year we're down about a thousand okay any comments on that one <coughs> at all okay kellogg hubbard library came in asked for an increase he made a presentation fire departments i don't know i mean those are their budgets they voted on them Maybe we'll get better at working with them over the next year or so. Anything on there? So an increase of 16,000. 
uh, oh, the cemetery, we don't know yet. Mm. It's in here. It's the cemetery. And, and that's, of course, that, that, as you say, that is a separate article. But uh, they were, I thought they were meeting last week. They were working on putting together a meeting last week to finalize their budget and submit their article. But I don't think they did meet. Okay, they, so we'll just, they, just leave it at what it I was know last that, year then. I know it, that it, Michael told me if anything, they're going to bring it, they think they're going to bring it down. Okay. I know so, they're struggling with the issue of a very expensive new fence at the Old West Church Cemetery. <coughs> um, and they were hoping to get the Old West Church to pony up, but they got a lot less from them than they were hoping. So that's going to be coming up, whether it's this budget or next budget. Well, is, well, the, is the cemetery owned by the Old West Church? Or is it by the town? I'll follow up with them because yeah. they were scheduling a meeting for last week, but then, the, then nothing was ever worn. So I'll find out what the status is on that. Okay. Uh, emergency management reserve. That's a thousand, which is different. We did. We, they were also in the main part. This is one we set. We vote on separately. Is that why that? I'm sorry. Which yeah. one are we talking about? I'm back. I'm on emergency mm -hmm. management reserve. Okay, I got it. Uh, so the 500 we voted last time was for operating, mm -hmm. and this yeah. is reserve. Okay. So there we are. We've now been through the budget once. Kevin. Kevin. That's the so I would suggest we take a look at it again. We have a meeting next Monday for maybe just an hour or two to try to finish this up. Does that work for you all? Six o'clock? <laughs> yeah. I know, I'm sorry. But it's budget season's almost over. It's definitely not going to snow next month. <laughs> <laughs> not it's if not you listen to the weather. It seems like a routine now. I know. <laughs> this is the third one in a row. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So that'll be warned as a special meeting only solely for the purpose of marking up the budget. There'll be no other business at that meeting. Um, Kari, you want some authorization. Oh, because we're not meeting again and you're going to need to sign the uh, yeah, board orders. Okay, so. But we are meeting next Monday. Um, yes, but that won't be, it, it's on December 25th that we would do it, because it's every two weeks. Right. Yeah, just, we want to pay on our, you know, yeah. Yeah. our cycles. So will somebody move to authorize Kari to approve release of checks on the warrants produced after December 11th and before December 31st? So moved. And moves it. Do we second. have a second? Jamie second. seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And you'll send us the same type of Yeah, and you'll have, a, you'll have a double stack on January 8th. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, Curtis Pond Dam. Jamie. Okay. Um, the first thing we have is a letter of support um, for a grant that the CPA has been hard at work applying for from the Vermont Outdoor Recreation Economic Collaborative. Um, it's a grant that has a, a pool of a little over six million dollars um, and it's specifically for preserving uh, public recreation uh, opportunities. The minimum amount you're allowed to apply for is $50,000. So they're looking at big chunks of money for projects. Um, we think this project fits really nicely. Um, Marge and Laura and others have put in a lot of work on the application. They've done a great job. Uh, we're asking for $500,000. Um, and if we get it, we're in great shape. Um, we won't know about the grant until mid-March, um, but we're hopeful that this will help cover the funding gap that we currently have. 
um, or completely cover the funding gap that we currently have in an ideal world. Uh, so we've drafted a letter of support uh, from the select board. It's been, it was in the folder for last week and it, it's been around for this week. Um, and so if folks have looked at it or I have a hard copy here, um, we would like a motion to authorize and to sign it on behalf of the select board. Um, it's just one of the one of the components of the application is letters of support from um, various folks. I thought it was a good letter. Yeah. Do you have a hard copy to sign? Okay. If somebody will, will get any questions for Jamie? Would somebody like to move, um, authorize me to sign the letter? So moved. Yes. Okay. Do we have a second? No second. And seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 I okay. suppose I'm still abstaining. And with Jamie abstaining. There you go, Jamie. And is it actually on the le letterhead? Uh, it looks like it's on letterhead. It's like draft it's on... offset there. Right. Oh dear, I missed um, that. Do we? I mean, I can get this to m the application is due Friday. Okay. Um, if if she wants a cleaner copy, we can. Well, I'm sure we have a. Can you scan that so we have a copy in the town office? Yes. Yep. If if you want me to email Marge and ask her to send me the Word document, I can put it on letterhead. If, yeah, I can if, run over to the town office tomorrow and sign it. In, in, in okay. any day, I guess before Thursday. Right. Whatever you guys say. Okay. So, Jamie, you'll let us know. Yeah. Just somebody let me know if they want me to go sign it. Okay. Um, Jamie, update us on what's going on now. So we got, um, just a couple hours ago, a updated quote um, from Hebert Construction. Um, they got final numbers uh, from D&K on amounts of concrete and other final design specs. Um, their current proposed budget came in at the $982,000. Um, it combined with the anticipated other expenditures that are coming down the pike um, puts the project budget, if you include a safety net, at about 1.2 million, um, which leaves us with a funding. Well, we've already spent 30 or 40 thousand, so it leaves us with a funding gap of somewhere just over 300 thousand um, dollars. Which hopefully the Vorak grant. Which would the Vorak grant? There's a there's a you know, the chance that the Vorak grant would fail. Um, we still have a bunch of fundraising underway and we've been waiting for this final number to come in um, so that we can go to a number of our big donors um, and, and <laughs> big and small donors and say, now's the time. Um, so we'll, we'll have, be having that go out uh, before the end of the year, probably, and hopefully start closing that gap. Uh, but we need to move forward, uh, and I may pass this to Kari, but the, um, the bond bank application is due this week? Monday. 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 Um, and so we are looking to authorize Kari and Sandra to submit that final application, um, which, as we've said, each of the steps along the way does not yet commit us to taking the money. It just moves the step, moves the process one step for it further. We could still, if, you know, spring comes or March comes and 
uh, it looks like the project's going to be delayed, we would still have an opportunity to reject the bond and, and not encumber those fees. Could you word a motion for us as to what you need us to do? Um, I believe it is a motion to authorize Sandra to uh, finalize and submit the bond application for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We that did that. Yeah, I thought we did. did we I did. think we did. You, you authorized her to proceed with starting the application. Right. I think so. Yeah. I think we authorized her to start it, but not is, submit it. it. Has, is yeah. there a significant application fee to submit that bond? I don't think I don't so. Know that actually. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I have never, I haven't heard of a. It's, I've never heard it's that. probably the closing costs of the, from the right. other end. Right. Which we can do that. Um, right. I think the last one primarily was getting, authorizing the lawyer to do his pieces. Yeah, I was going to say there's lawyer fees associated. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Okay. Right again. Is that. Did you get that pieces motion? Pieces of. Yeah, yeah. Authorize Sandra to. Well, do we, do we want to include for estimated project cost of one point two million? I mean, that's that's and, you know, right. we're, that, there's a lot of assumptions in that. <laughs> yes, number, there are. But that's our best guess at this stage. Right, and that's one of the pieces that we've been missing in the application is it wants um, a, a broader picture of the full project costs. And so with these numbers, we can start to piece in that section of the application. Are you saying that needs to be in the motion? Then? Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I just, that, that seems to me like that's the most important piece of information I think we're presenting to you tonight is that we have a $1.2 million project, we think, and a $300,000 funding gap. Right, but in terms of this motion. The bond is four fifty. Right. Yeah, the bond is four fifty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, does the bond application require approved minutes of the motion you guys are getting ready to make? Because we need to figure out how to get approved minutes before Monday mm. evenings. Uh, Slap on tomorrow. Good question. Be because I know when I'm done okay. having transactions on behalf of the town. They won't do it until we give them the approved yeah, minutes where you guys voted to do it. So uh, my, my understanding is that they, the bond bank is pretty flexible in terms of allowing us to complete the application that they, they you know, they want us to make uh, an honest effort to get it started and they will help us um, um, complete it. Now there may be some pieces like that that they want right off the bat, but I, I, I just don't know the answer. It sounds like they've been really good working with Sandra and okay. flexible with having the pieces come in. I, I, the other thing that I think we should raise is that um, where we have some flexibility with um, you know, uh, accepting the bond or not and thereby deciding whether to go, we have less flexibility with Larry Hebert, the contractor. Right. He, he will be patient only for a certain amount of time hmm. and then you're, you're thinking end of January, he'll want us to sign a contract. Right. He he didn't give specific dates, but he alluded it in our meeting or after our meeting that that by the end of January, if he didn't have a pretty firm commitment from us, then mm -hmm. you know he he's committing a big chunk of his crew for four pretty key months of the building season. Um, so. It, if we're not pretty solidified by mid to late January, he's said he'd have to consider looking at other jobs. What was the bond amount that was approved by the town and town meeting? Four fifty. That, that's what we're talking about. The, the question is, do we pursue it now? Do we go and apply for it and start the process of securing that financing? based on what we're presenting to you tonight. And the second cycle is like May? Or yeah, apply mm -hmm. May and get it in no, the mid-summer or something like that. Right. Okay. So you're right. Too late for this. Too late. Right. Okay. 
So, How is we, so we're not applying for a $1.2 million bond. We're, no. No, we're just no. stating that that's the project cost. Yes. Associated and with the bond it. application. Of, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Gotcha. We have 450 from the bond. We have 270 from yep. the Curse Bond Association and the Community Center. We have the ARPA monies, and we have a little bit in um, the reserve fund balance for the Curse Bond I have a question. Yeah. So uh, there was originally two bidders on this, correct? Yes. And Larry came up with this idea to change this with Dubois and King. Yes. Did the other bidder have the same option to reprice the project? Yes, we approached both bidders um, to and met with each bidder um, for the purpose of allowing them to offer suggestions. Um, both offered suggestions initially, um, and only one of them continued the conversation with us and came up with this alternate plan. But both had equal opportunity to do so. The cost is the same as the original bids now? No, the first the, bid was 1.2, the, or were they more? Right, the original bid uh, were 1.15 and 1.25. And now this is 980. Um, okay, so the previous bids didn't include the total cost. No, that was still money. just construction cost. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now your 1.2 is that that's a cube. What else is involved in that then? If the if the project is only 980. So the construction is 982. Um, we're estimating uh, 1.2 based on. Um, the 60 or so we've already spent on engineering costs, plus a proposed contract from DNK for construction oversight, which is anticipated to be, I think, 92, 90 or 92. Um, and then a few other miscellaneous, you know, all the permitting fees. There's a little bit of um, uh, aquatic endangered species mitigation that we need to hire a botanist and move a couple of plants. <laughs> um, yeah. So just sort of miscellaneous Thanks. soft costs. Um, and I have not read the email uh, super thoroughly that we got just before this meeting, but um, he did offer three other areas um, that could reduce that 982. Um, and just off the top of my head, it looked like, you know, depending on which of the options we took, it he had ideas of shaving maybe another 75 off of that. Um, some of which we may be able to do, and some we may not, depending on um, you don't really state know requirements. Right. Yeah. So, Rose, we have a motion. Would you read it to us? Um, Jamie made a motion to authorize Sandra Ferber to submit the bond bank application for $450,000 for a total, and I wrote a total estimated full project cost of $1.2 million. Okay, so Jamie's moved that. Do we have a second? Second. Is there anything else? Any further discussion? We all ready? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. With Jamie abstaining. abstaining. Is it okay that I moved it if I'm abstaining? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why not. Maybe you can vote against it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jamie. Anything else on Curtis Pond? We all set? I, I think, no. I think yeah. that's it. Okay. Thank you all. Um, Jordan, I, anything on IT? Nope. Um, anything on shed? No. Did we move the, did we tow the truck? The I don't know if it was actually towed. They called it and they were in. They said they were trying to get out there today. Okay. What was it? Oh, that should be an exact Gotcha. Oh, okay. Uh, Tegan, would you like to tell us some stuff? Oh, I would love to say some stuff. Uh, two things are on there. Which one is first? 
the town meeting morning. morning. Kari and I have put together a draft of the town meeting morning. I tried to get all the language in there appropriately, and then he said he would plug in some of the numbers that I didn't have. Um, right. Which I did. So it should be in your folders. It's pretty straightforward. We don't have anything yeah. wild on there we haven't had before. Uh, right. It's you all are going to approve it. It's going to go to the lawyer. If we want to do that, it needs to be done by January 22nd at the absolute latest. So it's not a huge pressing deadline at the moment, but we wanted to get started and make sure we double, triple check everything. This, this might be a wild addition, and I think I added in there as a possible other um, is the um, possibility of asking the town for permission to buy a new grader, which would not be part of next year's budget, but would be approved so we can go out and... I think we should. I think we need one. We need yeah. to get going on that. Yeah. Anybody have any thoughts? So that would be a, that'd be a 10 year loan and so we would have to put it on the... On the yeah, anything more than five yeah. has to be approved by the town. So we would put it on, but it would, we wouldn't be asking for any money for this next fiscal year Correct. for it? Yeah, I, what do you, is that all right with you guys? Yeah, would you put it on and we'll take okay. a look at it. Um, we don't need to put the boom mower on because it's under the... Correct. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. Um, didn't you already put the one about asking... You uh, uh, asked... Emergency management? No, I'm looking at the to be added to ask questions about the reports of town boards and officers. I see that. That's um, number four, article four. That's So that was taken off the last couple of years and we didn't know if we wanted to put it back that's what town meeting's about. I, to talk about that. I don't know why it got taken off. I haven't gotten to the bottom of that yet. Uh, I was supposed to meet with Judy today, but we postponed. Okay. Well, it may have been taken off because of COVID. Yeah, Two years we didn't meet in person. Yeah. We had a Zoom informational session. Yep. I mean, anybody disagree with me? <laughs> okay. And Jan's working on the language still, as far as I know, about changing the zoning stuff. Allocation of unspent highway department funds to equipment funds. Oh, yes. That's, uh, oh, that one again. Um, uh, do you guys all remember the history on this one? Mm -hmm. you, you would know. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently, what, it's about five or six years ago? 2015. Oh, 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 oh. Eight years ago. There was a request um, that whenever there was any money, or there was a motion that whenever there was any money left in the highway uh, budget, it would automatically roll into the highway equipment fund for the next fiscal year. And somebody um, amended it to say only for that year. So we have to vote on it every year. And we were wondering if we could try again to make it, we always do it, and we don't have to vote on it every year. Does that sum it up? Well, there's a little bit more of the story, which is it was either misunderstood or forgotten and we were doing, we voted we on doing it in anyway. there would be only for that year. And the town kept doing it ad infinitum until several years later we realized, oh, it was a one yeah, you brought I it. Would have discovered it. Yeah, that that it was supposed to be one year only. So it's been practice for the for many years, but we had to stop it once we realized we were doing it erroneously. So we're Oh, Rose. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah. it, was a, it was a very honest mistake. Let's. <laughs> so uh, the question is, should we put it on again? Anybody have a problem with putting it on again? And for? And saying forever. That's what it is. Yeah. Saying forever or saying annual? Okay. Well, let's try. Okay. I'm sure the same person will get up and try to change it again. And that's what we figured, but it's worth putting up there for discussion. Well, what happens to the funds if they're not in there? I mean, it... then they would uh, put it, send back the taxpayers in the form of a reduction of their tax bill. I see. And then the delinquent tax note is on there too. I don't see anything here. Not? not on mine. No. Were we, Kari, were we going to talk about this meeting? Well, no, we were. we're... Deferring it to the January 8th, but okay, um, we, we'll yeah. have a, just a preview, we'll have a proposal to consider increasing the tax. The, the I tax. saw it on the warning. You did have it on the warning. Yeah. Consider the possibility you're thinking about. Well, we have to announce <laughs> the tax rate on the warning, period, but we're thinking it should be 
I mean, I assumed it was, oh, shall a delinquent tax penalty be set at 3%? I assumed that was an increase. What do we have? No, now? 3 is what it three is. 3 is what it's been. Oh, okay. And 3 is very, very low. And what, what are you going to propose raising it to? The max is 8. A lot of towns do 8. Most towns do 8%. And uh, Sandra pointed out that right now what we make from delinquent tax funds does not cover the delinquent tax collector salary, huh. which she thought was an interesting point. Do you, how much did we get last year, do you know, or approximately? We'll, we'll provide all this. Yeah, it'll all be. Oh, OK, that's right. You're putting this on. I'm sorry. Something to think about it with all this. Anything else on the line? Delinquent tax. Scrooge. Oh. Uh, the other thing I had on there was the personnel policy. Uh, Anne and Jordan and Kari and before Sandra and Barbara, we've all sort of put our hands on it and tried to make it better. There's no huge sweeping changes, I would say. We did some updates to some language. We uh, aligned a lot of things with the uh, labor union contract to sort of make them mesh a little better. And now there's language that says that that will supersede this document. Um, and so we have a draft of that. It has gone to the lawyer, or will go to the lawyer, right? That was the next step. Oh, are you looking at me? Yeah, I, I, thought, I thought you were doing oh, that. Then I will do that. <laughs> I will be sending it to the attorney uh, to get it looked at uh, before we bring it to you all. But there is a draft available for you to peruse, and if you have questions, is it a question about things? So before you send it to our attorney, yeah. you can. Uh, one of the conversations, the very early conversations I had with uh, the contact from the VLTC was that they would review it. So we should send it there first. Um, that is right. somewhat free service. Yeah. Um, why do we need to send it to other attorney then if their attorneys will look at it? That's why I'm saying yeah. we should start there. So we'll send it to them. Send it to them. Yeah. And yeah. if they have any flags that they are like, maybe you should think about this or send it somewhere, you know, to your own attorney. Yeah. But they are attorneys, so yeah. and, and they, oh, have, they have one dedicated to this. So I wondered if you want to get select board feedback first, so if, if so, so that VLCT is looking at what we are actually proposing if we make any changes from select board change uh, edits. Yeah, we can do well, that. Well, that will slow the whole thing down. I well, except that if she sends it, if, if an attorney looks at it, and then you guys make changes to it, does would you, we need to ask the attorney to make look at it a second time? Well, to, I, I guess, well, for one, uh, because it was largely an exercise in trying to align things equitably with the with the contract that was negotiated with Anne, myself, and Jamie. The only one that would have input for changes would likely be <laughs> Donnie or Anna, and, and I don't think there will be too many. And also, I guess another caveat is like the, the VLTC won't be able to offer any kind of like legal judgment. They could probably just offer soft advice, but it wouldn't count officially as like a legal review, I don't think. Um, so. So yeah. Just have to caution how, how we're at, what we're asking for, because they'll be pretty quick to say like, "This is an illegal rule." Well, uh, they'll, they'll clarify. But they'll definitely they clarify. Yeah. They they were very curious to see what it what it would look like relative to our work to align it with the uh, labor contract yeah. um, and working in between their two model uh, models. So. Okay. So do you, um, should do I send you, it to VLCT first? Yeah. And, do yeah. you have the Contact. I think you were on that original. Yes, email I do too. have the contact information. Um, one final fun thing. Uh, I've been working with the road crew. They got a new truck. They got a new plow. Last year, the kids at the elementary school got to name a state plow. And so John Stafford and I are going to go, hopefully soon, um, they're working up to the 3 4 class. And we're going to talk about the road crew and the truck and what the truck will do and what the road crew does and what happens on a snow day and like a little civic sea lesson because three four is the grade when they usually do this oh very cool um, and name the truck and once they know what the truck does and they have a little more information they're going to name the truck and we're hopefully going to get the name <laughs> on the truck and then we'll come back john says they can bring all the trucks if we want and have all the kids look at all the trucks. So that's, we're trying to, it was a fun thing last year, but this year we're trying to make it more of a civics minded community lesson. Excellent. And so that'll be fun. <laughs>
Trump what are you doing Trump Trump face on the <laughs> I don't know. Danielle was going to get back to me. She was still talking. Yeah. Danielle was the secretary at the school. She was finding a good time with uh, the three, four teacher to do it. Cool. But I think soon. I feel like it's before the break. Before John, the break. Wow. Well, hmm? Not on right? Monday. <laughs> he wanted to go the day it was like five busy Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kari, do you have anything? Yeah, just a few things. <clears throat> I want to let you know that we, um, one of our roster members had an injury on Friday. Um, they uh, went to the emergency room, got checked out, and they were, they're okay. There was um, essentially no missed time, just a little bit of medical expense associated with, it, with that. Um, I mentioned the interviews. We're going to be interviewing hopefully three different people. Um, Is Toby going to be here for that? Toby will be part Toby of that. Be back. Oh, you well. said he's so, Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, just checking in about our cash situation, one of the board orders that you approved was, I don't know if you noticed this, 1.5 million to the school district. Mm -hmm. So um, we will have about a million left in the bank after that. Um, and so we're gonna be looking at accessing our line of credit or potentially going for this uh, municipal loan fund through the bond bank. Have we learned anything about that yet? Uh, no, but I have a, a webinar tomorrow. Um, okay. One of the key questions is, is there, um, uh, is prepayment, yeah. early repayment a, a possibility? Because if it's not, um, depending on the length of the loan. I think it was support. seven years. Seven, yeah, exactly. yeah, that, yeah. Um, and let's see, I, I, in the treasurer world, I did go to a training last week about um, I-9s and W-9s are going to be submitted electronically. And there is, uh, it's starting next, this next tax season, and there's just a lot of rigor around that because they're dealing with the IRS and the federal government. Um, and the bond application is now going to be top priority. We've got a week to get this thing in, and there's, there's a fair bit to it, so um, that's going to be a lot. And then starting to think about um, the Sanders transition, and that's something that's raising my blood pressure a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. that's going to be a major transition, obviously. Mm. Which reminds me, I meant to ask you, I noticed you've budgeted the full 16000 for Toby. So you're thinking he'll stay on for another year? Um, that's in there as a placeholder. And, you know, um, yeah. so we'll if, see. If, if something's got to give and I can't take that on, then, yeah. you know, that, that seems like a, okay. um, a useful thing. Because we're, we're committed to, you know, going a different direction with the, with the treasurer. Yep. So. yep. That was it. And what about hiring a bookkeeper? What are you doing about that? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a conversation with Wendy Wilton, who was last year's mm -hmm. treasurer, works for Nemrec, and and then um, depending on how that goes, we may start advertising soon because um, it could take a while these days. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, would Sandra leave before you got a bookkeeper on board? Um. Well, hope, hopefully she wouldn't leave before March, but she's pretty clear that March is her deadline. She is willing to continue doing the delinquent tax collection if we need her to, um, but she's, she's thinking about what's next for her, for sure. But we have until March then to yeah, get this yeah. bookkeeper. Right, right. but that one's going to be here so soon. Yeah, That's I know. Why. Yeah. I'm a little anxious. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else? Um, it occurs to me we could just continue this hearing. So I would like to continue this hearing until 6 o'clock next Monday. This hearing, sorry, this uh, meeting. meeting. And or the um, order, which okay. looks like they're signed. I will. Um, all right. Um, and with that, I think we're, we're uh, adjourned for now. Your we're uh, continue. continue. continued. We're continued. Yes, until next Monday at 6 o'clock. Same time, same place. Will it be budget only? Do we want to ask Rose if she can be in attendance to take minutes? Oh, I, it will be budget only. Rose, I don't think you need to be here. We may need an executive session um, to discuss the legal matter. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Well, I think we can manage anyway. We'll be fine. And we don't need Orca? No, I don't think so, no. Okay. Um, are you guys all in agreement with that? Yeah. yeah. I think so. Okay. <laughs> all right. Good night, Good night yes. Thank you. Good night.